Imagine a day when you can just ditch your portable gaming console and replace it with your smartphone. That would be a very good day, right, Brian? Yes. I'm talking with Brian Tong here, it's Senior Director here at ASUS. Now, I'm looking at your business card and you have many titles. You're Senior Director, Department 2, Product Marketing, Division 3, Product Operations Center. It's a very long title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you just say you're Senior Director, yes, right? Yes. Okay, just to clarify. Yes. Now, we saw the ROG phone last year, the first rendition, and this year, You've stepped it up with yes. the ROG2, which is the Republic of Gamers phone. What makes it different than the last, than the first rendition? I think in the last year, in 2018, we created the first generation ROG phone, and uh, we created the new gaming era, era. And right now, in the second generation, we move, move further. For example, like the Mutano, we upgrade to the 120 hertz MOLED display and also upgrade the amazing 6,000 million battery. Wow. Yeah, you can imagine that most of the, the smartphone, the battery size may be like 3,000 million, 4,000 million. Most biggest may be the 5,000 million. Mm -hmm. But right now we offer the gamer is the 6,000 million. Why? Because we found that the gamer, the most big pain point is mm -hmm. battery life. When they play game, it's very easier to run out the battery. Well, I think most people already have a pain point of their batteries on their smartphones. Yes. And on top of that, you're adding the gaming component. So yes. having a long battery life is yes. very important. Yes. What about the Snapdragon 855? Now, that's kind of the norm for this year's uh, phones. But you've added something a little different. Snapdragon yes. 855 Plus, what yes. does that mean? Actually, A55 Plus is the frequency also different from the regular A55. For example, like the CPU frequency is upgraded to the 2.96 gigahertz. Okay. And also the GPU frequency also upgraded to 675 megahertz. So it's the frequency upgrade. And for the performance wise, the CPU can increase the 4%, but the GPU increased the 15%. So especially for gaming, you know, gaming is very, need the GPU power. Mm -hmm. So the GPU power up to the 15%. That's why we chose the uh, S855 Plus. And we are also the first one to up with the Qualcomm to launch the S855 Plus CPU. So it's a truly a phone that supports gamers and gaming. And yes. I know that it supports many gaming titles. It already comes preloaded with one. Tell us about that. I think we not just the pillow actually all work with a lot of a different title. We want to enable the ecosystem, and uh, because of, for example, like we offer the 120 hertz, so we need the game developer to support, and we also have a twin view that I can introduce. The twin view the need the game developer to have to create the dual screen, and also have a dual vibration because the regular phone only have one vibrator, but we took two vibrator inside because we want to make the user have a more immersed gaming experience. The one is on the left, another one on the right. So two vibrators, that, that's all need the, the, the game, game title to support. So we actually, we not just only below, for example, it's the S49. And we also create the a page. Here you can see we have, sorry, 120 hertz, the support is, a lot of games always support 120 hertz. Twin view, what game we can support twin view? For support air trigger, support a two vibration, support game pad. So we do have a list here to let user know what features we have and what the game title we have can support the, all the features. And what's the title that's already preloaded with the phone? Right now for the pre we, we the preload only preload the S49, but for the others we will put into the, the a, a, a page. Uh, uh, to let user to directly download from the Google Play, let user know which features we have can support 120 hertz, twin view, and air trigger, and etc. And what are some ways that streamers can take advantage of this phone? I think, for example, like the gaming streamers, when I play game in the past, they need to download the other app or they need a, a, a lot of equipment to connect the phone to the PC, mm -hmm. use the PC to streaming. And now we just let just need the phone itself and we, we, we create our uh, unique mm -hmm. software inside our uh, software called Game Genie. With just one click, the gamer can direct to streaming to the YouTube and to Twitch. 
Mm. So it sounds like it's that instantaneous of everything. You're getting instantaneous gaming, instantaneous streaming, instantaneous results, no more waiting and with that delay. And also with great battery life, you can be playing and streaming for a very long time. Uh, I remember last year when I first saw the ROG One phone, I was very impressed by all the peripherals and accessories with it. And this year, with the ROG Two, the accessories have all also been upgraded, yes. right? Yes. Can you tell us a, a little bit about the upgraded accessories? Here you can see we have the uh, gamepad. And this year, the gamepad is we it is can detachable. We can put the gamepad just on on side of the, the phone and also can combine the Joy-Con into the gamepad play the game, play game like this you can also play game with the Bluetooth or 2.4 GHz wide uh, RF to connect the, the phone to play game so we, we create a different scenario for the, for the user they want to play game on the go for example in the MRT right. they can just play connect the Joy-Con and uh, on the go to play game. When they go going home, sitting in the living room, you can also put the, the phone in the living room, for example, uh, in the, in the TV, uh, beside the TV. Mm. And the play game, sitting in the sofa, play game. So you can cast this onto a bigger yes, screen? Yes, yes. So we create a different scenario. So this is the game here. And also we create a, the, this time the TwinView second generation. We make this lighter and, and easy, easier to carry. And also we can connect with the Joy-Con. And what's the advantage of having a dual screen here? Yeah, the, the, the dual screen right now have a different scenario. First scenario is the game itself. They can support a two screen. For example, like S49, and uh, more and more the game we will go up with the developer level support two, two, two screen. So the one game can, for example, one game can support two screen. One, uh, for S49, this take S49 as an example, you can play game here, and here you can see the track. So just you can have a two screen to play game, see the more information. And the second scenario is so you can play game in here and launch another app in here. So we, we create a lot of a different scenario for gamers. So you can do a little bit of multitasking, getting information on two separate screens with two separate, separate yes. sets of information. So the second screen is not so much an extension, but it's an addition to that main uh, screen. Yes, yes. Very interesting. What about here? Yes. And also this is the, 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 the fan. It's an aero active fan. Put in here, you can cool it down the, about the uh, five degrees of the phone. Mm -hmm. So you know, especially the gaming phone is very you can consume a lot of power. So yeah, and and also the the, the, the CPU size we put in here. So we need a fan to reduce heat. And uh, in this generation, we have a lot a very good uh, thermal solution. We have, we we combine. We have a one the, the first the first one is the three D vector chamber. In the in, in the half side, and also we have a uh, uh, heat sink in the real side, mm -hmm. and make the heat can dis detach to outside, and uh, and then we connect the fan here to release the heat coming from here. So totally, we can reduce the five degree Celsius. Wow! Yes. And do you put on the fan from the beginning, or do you put it on when you feel the the phone heating up? Uh, depends on the user, and uh, sometimes user don't just don't want to carry the fan, carry it out everywhere. Just sometimes they just play the uh, the game not so heavy, but sometimes they play some some game is consume a lot of power. It's cause the, the device to hit. Then user can just prop easy easier to prop the fan. And then what about this idea of having really great audio in your gaming experience? Tell us about that. I think audio is so important. Very. Yes. So we have uh, two things. The first is we create the dual front facing speakers. Yeah. So most of the uh, smartphone, they only have uh, one speaker in the bottom. Mm -hmm. When you can imagine when you play a game, the audio is in here, the block by your hand. So we put the dual front facing speaker when you're holding the landscape on the phone 
the the the, the, the audio will never never block on your hand. Okay. So easier. And the, also dual front facing speaker can listening the sound and know the direction. Directional sound. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you know where the bullets are coming from. Yes, <laughs> yes. And also we call it with DTS. So make the also work with DTS and the game developer. So make the the audio we can listening very clear and the sound, the direction the bullet can come came from. Mm. So it's got superior DTS sound yes. and it's got both of them you know, yes. multi-directional. So it's immersive and also directional yes. at the same time. It sounds like it's a phone built for any type of gamer in any sort of gaming situation. It's very customizable. So some scenarios you were talking about. So here, this scenario, we're looking at the gamer on the road. Maybe you're yeah. on the subway or yes. you're on the bus. And here, when we when we take it into this portable controller, then you're at home casting this onto a bigger screen, yes. and you're probably wanting that bigger screen because you see information. But this dual screen scenario is very interesting to me because you could do this, you could use this either on the go yes. or you could do this at home, but I'm thinking this is more of like, you go to your friend's house scenario and everybody wants to play the game at the same time and you're seeing different kinds of information on the, on the dual screens. So it's, it's fascinating to me that in one little device, you've got three different scenarios yes. for three different environments. Yes. Now, the goal is to replace your portable gaming console with your smartphone. Do you think that this phone is it? I think, actually, I don't think we, our goal is to replace the portable gaming device. Actually, our goal is bring the more scenario, more gaming experience to users. There, there are different, different categories. The console gamers, they still play console. And the mobile gamers, they play the different titles. And so we, we, what we want is not replace the, replace the console. Actually, we want to enhance the mobile experience. So we believe that there are a lot of different user behavior, different game experience. Some people, they like to play game in the living room. Some people, they like to play game in the study room, use the keyboard and mouse. Some people like to play game on go. So we want to use one device to fulfill the every kind of scenario. Oh, okay, that's fascinating to me because you're saying that the console gamer is a totally different segment than the mobile gamer and the ROG phone satisfies the needs of the mobile gamer and not so much, the focus is not to replace the console yes, gamer yes. with a new device. Yes. I would love to hear from you all at home. Do you think, for all you console gamers out there, do you wish that you just had a mobile gaming device that could replace your console gamer gaming device? Or do you want both? Do you want both experiences? I would love to hear what you have to say. Now, what do you think this could look like in 20 years? ROG, the 20th edition. I think it's hard to say, but I think the gaming will, in the, this industry, for example, like AR, I also, I always think AR will become uh, popular in the future or if the technology can meet the requirement. Because the, the gaming, the experience, we always focus on the gaming experience. You need to be more immersed and also connect with the real world. So maybe in the future, the AR and also the device become more seen and live and the, the, the computing will go up to the cloud. Maybe it's the future of the trend, that's what I believe. But for 20 years later, I cannot imagine. But I believe this is trend. I don't know if everyone feels this pain point, but I feel like with any sort of gaming device, you just have so much to carry with you all the time. This is wonderful because it's transformative, but you also need something to hold this and this and this at the same time. It'd be great that in 20 years we get rid of all the hardware accessories and just have it all focus on one screen that can project, that can be augmented, that can be VR, that can be holograms, yes. whatever that may be in yeah. 20 years. We'll see. Well, thank you so much, Brian, yeah, for, for showing us the ROG2. I can't wait to play with this later. And, and just, it looks so different from yes. the first one already. It's so sleek and it's so slim. I can't wait to have a hands-on experience with it. Thanks again.